Hey everyone, today I wanna to do a follow-up review on the Torrent 7. Now, I said I was gonna do this follow-up review after like three to four months of training and uh, I never did, but with the Torrent 8 coming out soon, I figured that what better time than now to revisit the Torrent 7, especially because once the Torrent 8 comes out, you're probably gonna see way more discounted Torrent 7 models. So uh, let's jump into it. Now real quick, I just wanna say that I bought this shoe with my own money. I do unsponsored, unpaid reviews on this channel. If I ever do do a sponsored review, I'm gonna make that clear right away, right up front. But however, I just wanna mention that this shoe I paid for with my own money. I do this because I wanna bring you reviews that are unbiased and free of bullshit and uh, just know that I do use these products. And as you see, I have uh, put some miles on this shoe. Now, the first thing I wanna mention is if you want a detailed review, please go see my Torrent 7 review video. That's linked in the video description and you can see it uh, right above here. Now, that video will give you a very, very detailed breakdown of what the Torrent 7 is, the changes from year to year, why I like it. This one is gonna be a, just an expansion of that video, touching on the topics that I talked about in that video. And there's gonna be no script here. This is just me kind of uh, honestly raving about how much I love this shoe. I love it way more than the Torrent 6. The Torrent 5 has been my favorite shoe for a couple of years now. I have a few pairs stockpiled, but honestly the 7s, with their discounted price coming up in the next few months, I'm gonna try to snag a decent amount of these this this model because, man, I, I think it's my new favorite. So with that out of the way, what I really like about the shoe it, that I was concerned about was the extra stack height. If you look at my last review, which you should have done, done by now, the stack height increased between the six and the seven, and I wasn't quite sure about that. However, after a few, you know, few runs, a few hundred miles of breaking it in, this stack height has condensed, of course, but it still feels uh, it still feels very responsive uh, compared to this uh, this pair of torn fives with the same miles. The the footbed, if you can see it there, the footbed has totally smashed up. So the road feel is actually <laughs> very intense in these. You can feel like every pebble in these, which is good and bad. When I wear my torns, I don't want to feel that. So the extra stack height, while I was you know a little tentative at first about you know the foot stability. It has, it has condensed, but it still has that nice soft road feel, if that makes any sense. So that's, a, that's another one up for the Torn 7s versus previous models, like I said, this Torn 5. Another thing you'll notice right here as I'm holding it is that if, if you look at the Torn 5, this thing, I don't know if it's the material in, in the footbed, but it just, it kind of, uh, it's, it's kind of, I don't know the word. <laughs> it's kind of a uh, shriveled up. And what this does, I think it's because the footbed, it shrinks a little bit, and so it pulls those toes in. And my toes actually rub against the front here uh, pretty pretty badly. Whereas in the, if you take a brand new pair of sevens versus an old sevens, you can see that that toe, it's it's slightly going up, but not. I don't really notice it. When I'm switching between my new pair and my old pair, I don't notice my toes rubbing up against that front. But when I jump to an old pair of Torn 5s, I definitely notice my uh, my toenails kind of kind of rubbing the front of the shoe. So that's something else I like about the Torn 7 is longevity with uh, not getting all, all shriveled up. Another thing I was concerned about was the, the foot shape. I know they're getting smaller and smaller every year or so it seems like. I, I think, I don't know if it's because, like I said, that foot base, it's not, it's not shrinking, it's not shriveling up, but after 700 miles, it almost feels like I have more room in the toes. This could also be the meshes stretching out a little bit, but I don't have any, any toe splay issues. I feel like I have enough room for my feet, especially in that midfoot. In my last review, I talked about the midfoot was so gracious, and I'm really noticing that here. And because I have so much room in that midfoot, I'm seeing almost no tearing out of the inner side of this shoe. A lot of the old shoes, yeah, there's a little bit of a little bit of wear, but for the amount of damage you put it through and the amount that your your insole is just it, it's pushing on that, I'd expect to see a lot more damage here. And because it has that wider midfoot, it feels really good. So I'm hoping for the Torn Eights and the future models Ultra, you know, keeps at least this foot shape. If not, you know, maybe go a little wider. I don't think they're ever gonna go wider. I think it's always gonna be smaller, if anything. But I really hope they keep they keep the foot shape they have in the Torn Sevens. It it just feels really nice. So as I'm looking at these two shoes, I want to talk about the wear and tear. So if you look in here, I'll get a close up. There is actually uh, quite a bit of damage to the back heel collar here. It's no more than what I experienced wearing the Torin 5s. So there is some wear in the heel collar, but it's it's well, actually less than the 5s and it's to be expected. All my shoes have that, that heel collar 
damage, so that's not too bad. The one thing that I'm concerned about, let me grab this other pair right here, is that right here on my left shoe, it's ripping a little bit. You can probably see that there's a small tear right there. That is, uh, that's the only damage I see to the upper mesh. Now, this is actually kind of, it worked out in my benefit because my, my toes on my left foot, they're always kind of, I get a hot spot, and this kind of showed me that maybe my, uh, my gait is a little off, so I've been working on my gait, but I did only notice that in my left foot where I have kind of a, I put some pressure on the outside of my foot. So if you see people complaining about the build quality of the Torin 7s, it just may be, it may be accurate, honestly. Uh, for me, for the, right, for the right pair, there's absolutely almost zero tearing of that upper mesh. For the left pair, there is a bit of tearing. So for these shoes, they seem to be good, but that's something to watch out for. And if I was gonna, you know, as I transition these to my rough shoes and I start hitting more trails with them, the Florida trails are pretty, <laughs> pretty weak uh, as far as trails go. I expect that the upper mesh will be snagged and rip a lot more. So all, all that's to say that if you run in rough conditions with these, I would just be careful because it is gonna damage that upper mesh. But in terms of actual build quality and the, the integrity, the construction of the shoe, I think it's pretty, it's pretty, it's decent. It's on par with Ultra's been putting out. You're not gonna be amazed by it, but it's also not gonna disappoint you either. So going back to my main point of my original video, would I buy these shoes at full price? Yes, I would. However, if you're watching this review right now, uh, <laughs> that you don't have to buy them at full price, I got this, this brand new pair, this beautiful blue pair. I got them for $100, so they were $100 on sale, and I expect them to last quite a while, and I'm not gonna buy them until they go at least to $100, if not below. If you look at the Torrin 6s, you can get those for like 60, 70 bucks most days. I, I hope these drop down to 60, 70 bucks. If they do, I'll be stockpiling many, many pairs, but I just feel like that shoe wasn't um, quite as impressive as the Torrin 7. I still like my 6s. I have a few pair, I have uh, a backup pair. I say a few pairs, like I have a closet full of shoes. I don't have a closet full of like 50 shoes. It's like, <laughs> it's like one spare pair, but I do have one pair of Torn 6s that I haven't worn that if I, you know, on a rainy day, I might pull them out. But I'm gonna wait till the Torn 7s uh, drop down in price as I usually do. If they're 60, 70 bucks, that's amazing. But if they kind of fall in line with Torn 5s, you're probably gonna see them for like 80, 90 bucks uh, on, a, on a good day. So I would definitely wait till they, they drop in price. They're going to drop in price especially with the Torn 8 coming out in uh, probably a few weeks or a few months. So yeah, I love this shoe. I don't buy shoes at full price unless I'm reviewing them, but I would say that this shoe would be worth the money, but like I said, a uh, new shoe coming out soon. So definitely wait, save your money, but just know that the money you do put into this shoe, you're gonna get right back out of it. It's a great shoe, I love it. It's my new it's my new go-to. Uh, I will be buying the Torn 8s when they come out to review them and kind of transitioning that into a race shoe. Uh, I don't like paying full price for shoes as I just mentioned, but for you guys, uh, I'll do it. And you know, it's never, it's never a bad day getting a new pair of shoes in the mail. So uh, I'll take that hit.